What's going on, everybody? This is Clark Beckham. Welcome to the Dean's Edition. It doesn't feel very Dean-y because I'm in an Airbnb right now instead of my office, but they didn't fire me. I'm still the Dean of Canada Christian College where they, we have developed a music program that is purely focused on the practical to show musicians and singers how to make a career out of music today. Let's get going. They run right into the episode with Rock Moyer, who plays an absolutely gorgeous ballad on the piano, almost as like their intro bumper. And I was a big fan. I loved hearing, I love hearing singers that are just playing beautiful melodies in a heartfelt way. Something that will be a theme of this entire season, something I'm really passionate about when it comes to singing. This is the golden rule for singing. You have to emotionally connect to the song, whether that's lyrics or just the chords or the melody, and then from that emotional connection, must you sing? Must you decide what to sing? Every, every musical decision, whether it's the arrangement that the band is playing, um, or a vocal arrangement, or run, or note that you sing, or a note that you don't sing, needs to be informed by the emotional connection. Rock seemed to do it flawlessly here. About me. Liliana. I liked her a lot. I liked her a lot more than I think general public, the general public did at least the Groove Crew members, which they liked her too, but I really liked her. I liked her because of what we were just talking about, of how emotionally connected she was to what she was singing. It was almost theatery as far as that um, emotional projection being a little almost unrealistic, but I believed it, and I mean almost, so that means it wasn't too much. Um, really reminded me of Lizzie McAlpine. I guarantee you that is her. Lizzie McAlpine is in her top three most listened artists. Guarantee. And then Luke, actually. It's usually Katie, but Luke has tasted the poison himself, and now he is sick with it. Of, is there a fifth gear? Do you... Do you, do you have some more? This happened all throughout the show, all throughout this episode. You don't have to belt to be good. You don't have to belt to be good. It's like she's given a beautiful song that she's written herself. Katie said she loves a song. She means it. She sings within her limits, which is what good singers do because we all have limits. And then he goes, yeah, but can you just belt? Can you just give us the, you know, we don't need that. We don't need that. He says, "You, <laughs> I can't remember who said it. It might have been, I think it was Lionel. He said, you know, you just can't go out there in Hollywood week and just, and then just go sing la la la. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. If that's what you do. That's exactly what you should do. If you go and sing La 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 and you sing La 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 better than most people can sing La La La, then you should sing La La La. You shouldn't try to be Jaina or the other monster belting powerhouses. That is the quickest way to get cut in the competition and to not have a career, is to abandon what you do best. And for the judges to keep saying can you sing louder though? Yeah, that's good, but man, what about some volume? Drives me nuts. We'll talk more about it later because they say it over and over and over again. She goes through, thank goodness, Sophia. Sophia is the best singer of this episode at the time that she sings. Really loved her voice, beautiful cry, great control, really impressive for her range. She comes in um, with a bunch of 15 and 16 year old singer montage contestants. Um, 
And a lot of singers, when they're young, you can hear their youth in their voice. You can hear where they need to advance or where they need to mature. Not the case for Sophia. She sounds very mature in her voice, and I feel like we're getting the richness of the gift that God has given her and the fullness thereof when she sings right now. Brant McCullough, good old country bow. Uh, the B string on his guitar is flat, and it's kind of bothered me. Maybe I'm the only one. You have to tune the guitar after you put the capo on when you have a capo. Capo is that little clamp you see on the guitar neck, and it makes you or allows you to play um, a key that you're comfortable with, but higher because you clamp it up higher and then it raises the pitch, but you get to play G, C, D, the chords you're comfortable with in a higher key. Everyone that I know, I mean pros, forget or don't know that you have to put the capo on and then tune your guitar or else doesn't matter how perfect your guitar is it is in tune before the capo, it's going to be out of tune. So that was bothering me, but I'm a weirdo. Maybe you guys didn't even notice. I, unlike Sophia, I could hear the youth in his voice and I could hear where it needs to be filled out. I don't think, I think he's singing right now at about 60% of his full potential when his voice is fully matured. This would have been one that I would have given suggested to give more time to um but he's goes he goes through he's got talent he sounds good right now i just think he's gonna sound so much better in four or five years a lot of contestants come on really young do well and then afterwards three or four years later they're like dang man if i was on that show now they just they just feel much better about their voice when they're 18, 19, 20 years old, instead of 15 or 16. Carmen Olivia is another one of these young singers, and she's a beast. She's singing some nasty, good, hard, sharp runs. She missed the last note, either missed it or she got lost in a run, which happens. You just have to know exactly where you're going. Every step you take vocally has to be plotted out before you take it. Either that happened and she got lost, or she just missed it, which that happens sometimes. High stakes. She's nervous. She sounded great, though. When I'm talking through all of these elements, so many things, like getting lost or <laughs> the capo issue, so many things, almost all of the things can be fixed so easily. And that's why I offer these music lessons where we go through performances. So you're singing, you're performing on Zoom for me. For me sounds weird. We're working through it. You're performing and then I am helping you advance in your performance ability right there with the voice you have. There are car mechanics who work on the mechanics of your voice, the technique to get your engine stronger. Then there are driving instructors that work on how to drive, how to help you drive the car that you already have at its highest potential and at your highest potential. I'm a driver instructor. I can do the mechanic stuff, but I'm better at the driving, driving instructing side of things. BeckhamLessons at gmail.com. You can email me and we can talk more about the logistics of things. But I wish all of the contestants would have hit me up because I know I could have helped a lot. I'd love to help you if you're interested in auditioning for American Idol or singing for any other event. We go to commercial and we come back to a good old judge shenanigan. Good old is actually too high of praise because it's not very good, and it it's just so corny and cheesy to me. Chanley liked it. I Actually, a lot of the Groove Crew members on the Watch Party live stream liked it. So maybe it's just me being a good old Scrooge, a humbug. Allo, is it me you're looking for? They lose him. It's not even a shenanigan thing in the, in the audition room. It's just... They actually put effort to walk around Santa Monica 
and lose Lionel next to an aloe plant so he could so that he could say aloe is it me you're looking for that was the whole bit budget money went to doing that that's what that went to garrison garrison saying superstition i like garrison i like the way that he opened up his tone when he would sing runs so instead of like an ah, like R almost, so instead of very superstitious, it was very superstitious. Like ah, ah, just open round tone, which was cool. Kind of a throwback, kind of old school. And he sang it well. His runs were very sharp, very clean. And you could tell he is an old soul. He even started doing like the Stevie Wonder rock back thing. Um, I like him. He started to miss a little bit as it went on. I hope it was just out of nerves or because they were yelling at him quite a bit. So hopefully it was for, from that. Next, we've got Jaina. He's all the Jaina is a returner from last season who, in my opinion, sang her best in her audition. And then we never really got that Jaina again. This time, she hit us with an explosion. It's like we've been presented with good singers. Singers that we hear and I'm thinking, yeah, she's good. Yeah, he sounds great. Yeah, he goes through. Great. Looking forward to what he does next. Awesome. And then... <laughs> Jaina. We're hit over the head with... Oh, that's what a monster sounds like. Her range was great. Her resonance, like mixed voice, was glorious. Her runs were spot on. The arrangement was awesome awesome the piano player not friendly was someone that she had a guarantee i mean i'm assuming and i'm very confident that it was someone that she had come in who knew this arrangement that she arranged this with and the arrangement made the whole thing it was a gospel version of this song and it was great i could tell there were a lot of hours put into this arrangement and boy did it pay off keegan james why do we just dismiss him? Why was he a gimmick? He's a great singer. And the skating was very impressive. I think they missed one. I think they missed I think they missed one here. He seemed fine with it. The judges were like, oh, all right, thanks. Wow, well, that was funny. Not for this show, but thanks so much. You're great. And he's like, it's great. Whatever. What happened is what needed to happen. And I think that's not what needed to happen. I think they missed out on a good talent. Let him keep his skates on, too. I thought he had a great voice. Had a ton of power, and to skate like that while singing well, that's very impressive. Let him dance around on stage and continue to sing throughout the whole show. And I'm being serious. I'm not being, I'm not making a joke here or being sarcastic at all. I think they really did miss out on a great singer. Kate Gardner. Is it? Did not miss out on her. I thought she had great pitch, great tone to follow up. When you match really good tone with really accurate pitch, that is what elicits this, like what Katie said. She was locked in right from the beginning. When you have a good song with good melody and someone who's singing it with great pitch and great tone, you're locked in. You're not thinking about anything else. You don't get bored. You don't check your watch. That's what she gives us. She's great. Uh, Tina B, a Groove Crew member in the live stream watch party, said that she sounds like Casey Musgraves, which I think is a perfect comparison. JC. Okay, JC and Mia. Take the ribbon from my head. Shake it loose and let it fall. Rugs. Always 
they come in as sisters. I'm terrified that only one of them's good, and then they got to split them up, and then we're going to have a situation there. Luckily, they're both great. Here's the weird part. The judges are on another planet when they're talking about these girls. They are on another planet. I don't know if they just came back from lunch and there was some funky stuff in their food. I don't know what scenario could possibly justify the lunacy that is coming out of their mouths when they're talking about JC and Mia saying, I don't know, just... I just, I, it came across as timid. Katie even said it. Katie was like, angelic, wonderful, and what's another synonym of those words? Timid. I don't know if you're going to be able to handle what's coming in front of you if you're timid. She means you're not loud. I cannot believe we have an expert expert wildly successful consistently successful singer like Katy Perry a pop star who is a monster herself who is reducing her critique to are you loud she even says it's angelic and it's wonderful And she just keeps going back to, yeah, but Hollywood Week is going to be pretty loud. Are you real loud? (laughs) How do you miss the gorgeous, extraordinary, other level, high, 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 high quality above almost everyone else in this entire season of tone and runs and taste that J.C. And Mia bring to the table for you to be wishy-washy and on the fence and then barely make it through. What planet are our judges residing on? Thank goodness they made it. It seemed pretty close. At first, I'm thinking Luke can't be serious when he's barely on these two. And then all the judges are. Let me just, when we're talking about the belting thing, you don't have to be good. You don't have to belt to be good. Can we just name some singers that don't belt that are incredible and incredibly successful? Lizzie McAlpine being one. John Mayer being one. I don't know. The biggest artist of our time. Arguably success rate of all time. Taylor Swift. She doesn't belt. You know who else doesn't belt? Who just won an Oscar? One of her many. Billie Eilish. Carol King, Nora Jones, any of those people, any of those superstars that come into audition for American Idol right now would get, yeah, but you got that fifth gear, you got the grit, you're about to go into Hollywood week, can you, can you belt, sing, sing this Adele song real loud, go, are we, are we serious? Let's move on. I'm just going to get angrier. Jordan Hathaway. I'd rather hear how much you regret me. Jordan Hathaway. I thought he had a pretty voice. I liked his verse voice. I'm starting. I've got a student that I teach lessons to named Adam, and he's awesome, by the way. Has a wonderful, glorious tone to his voice. And I. I'm starting to realize that some people have great voices for verses. Jordan has a great verse voice. Beautiful tone and vibrato like Adam does. The only thing that I had with Jordan, because his runs were clean, and his chorus sounded great too. He opened up belting really well. The only thing I had on Jordan was I felt like he was on the verge of cracking for a lot of his bigger notes, including the O run thing that he did that was really sick. I felt like we were just on the edge for him of of cracking. And that comes from singing in chest voice and not going into mix. Chest voice is what we talk in. Chest voice is what we yell in. The higher we try to go in chest voice, the the closer to yelling it sounds. 
he didn't get to that point where it sounded like yelling straining but he did get to the point where i thought he his voice was going to break when we're just in chest voice our stamina plummets as singers and we don't have much to give in comparison to what's called mixed voice mixed voice is found in that squeaky kind of place uh, like that it sounds a little silly in its raw form but it's where we take uh, to uh, or where you hear stevie wonder live he lives in mixed voice brian mcknight lives in mixed voice if you stay in chest voice mixed voice you can sit there all day long and there's not a lot of strain um but with chest voice there's a lot of strain so i'm worried about that um with jordan Katie said, Katie said he had tons of range. I didn't think he had tons of range. I think she liked him a lot and wanted something good to say about him. I liked him. Don't get me wrong. I don't think he had a lot of range. And I'm worried about his chest voice sustaining in high pressure situations. Let's go on to Victoria. Victoria. I thought she sounded great. Right when she sang, I didn't have my phone recording me for reactions immediately Chanley's phone was the closest I was like can I have your phone I need to record myself for her because she's really good right off the top doing some really clean runs I liked her tone she's got a style similar to Tori Kelly in her vocal delivery um too bad for her that all she got as critique from the judges is yeah but can you sing loud can you sing louder? Last thing I'm going to say about this. The microphone takes care of volume. This microphone right here. I can see how quiet I can talk. And you can hear me great. I can sing right here. Gravity is working against me. See how I can just sing real quiet? You don't have a problem with hearing that, do you? No, because the technology that takes the sound waves out of my face, into this microphone, into an interface, into logic is what I record from, and comes out of your speakers, this incredible technology makes it possible to sing real loud or real quiet, and you can hear it just the same. So for them to ask her to sing with more volume, actually doesn't doesn't make any sense to me because it doesn't really have any degree of change to the sound grit you can say that but to come back to volume on every contestant it's blowing me away these are experts these are brilliant singers and performers and they need to understand that volume is not the issue here bethany he Bethany sings Piece by Piece, a beautiful song by Kelly Clarkson that she sang on American Idol the season after mine. And I was there for it, actually. When she sang it, I was in the audience. And Keith Urban was boo-hooing, shoulder-shaking, crying over that song because it's a beautiful song. And it relates to Bethany specifically and her story, and her situation, and it's a beautiful story, and Bethany gives us a lot of beauty in her personality, and in her aura that she gives, and her family values, and how much she cares about her family. Vocally, I thought she delivered the song well. I don't, I don't think I would have said yes to her going through Vocally, she doesn't give me enough when it when it comes to making it through on American Idol. And for me, she didn't give me the voice in that audition anyway. Maybe she has it, but just judging by that audition, didn't quite cut it for me. Isaiah Case. What could I do? Isaiah is a worship pastor. Uh, gives me a lot of Chris Stapleton vibes. His dad looks exactly like Jack Black. If they told me, and he's best friends with Jack Black, here's Jack Black FaceTiming him, and it was that video that we saw of him and his dad, I would have been like, 
yeah, that's Jack Black. They're right. That's crazy. How does he know him? Um, Elizabeth Korn, who's a member, Groove Crew member in the live stream watch party, she said that she described his voice as soulful, rough, and rootsy, which I thought was better than any description I was giving in that live stream. Um, I thought I thought that was the truth. As far as just strict vocal talent, I don't think he's elite. I think he's got genuine soul, and I enjoyed listening to it. I don't think he's got the motor to, and I don't, I don't mean volume. I don't mean volume. I don't think he's got the juice to really go the distance on this show, in my personal opinion. I talked earlier how I'm a driving instructor when it comes to voice. Not to sell you, not to just sell you short here. The best when it comes to mixed voice, the best in the world, if you're wondering and if you want some mechanic, car mechanic work, you know, actually work on your vocal engine, the best is Singing Success by Brett Manning. They're who I went through, who taught me the mixed thing that I was I was doing that like squeaky sound earlier. I learned all of that from them. My range personally was but. It was very, 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 very limited until... I went through their program and it changed everything for me. They've become good friends of mine now because I talk about them all the time. And they've actually given me a 10% coupon that I can give anyone I want. So if you're down to work on that resonance, on that mixed voice, and explode your range in a way that doesn't tire you out, um, you can go to Singing Success. Click the link in the description and use the code that is also in the description, and you get 10% off of anything that they offer online, which is pretty sweet. Also, if you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about when I say live stream watch party and Groove Crew members, for $5 a month, you can become a Groove Crew member. So it's a member of this channel. It's join, there's a join button underneath this video, in fact. If you're interested in becoming a Groove Crew member, why would you want to do that? Well, because you get to be a part of these live stream watch parties where I live stream myself watching American Idol with you. And then in the commercials, I unmute myself so you don't hear like two televisions going on. And then we talk through what's going on and what we think about everything. And I'm a little bit more unhinged, if I'm being honest, in those because I know it's only my members that are listening. So if that if that sounds like fun to you, it's pretty cheap. It's $5 a month. I make it cheap to make sure that everyone who would want to can be a part of that. Speaking of, we've got some new members. We've got Adam Daniels, Casey Smokey, Kyle Hamaker, Joe Looney, Economic Lens, Kelby Gilmore, Dylan Pipkin, and Shadell. So I'm going to say your name, Shadell. I like that a lot. I'm just going to say Shadell. That's going to be my new like pizzazz word. Shadell. Last contestant we have is Julia. It ain't no way. Ooh. Ooh. Julia is a haymaker. She sings Aretha Franklin so powerfully. And when she's singing, I am falling head over heels in love with what she's in love with, which is the gift of singing and the gift of melody and harmony along with the chords of this song. And you can tell it means so much to her and she values singing so much that's what brings such joy to our hearts when we hear her talent i promise you there are people that you have heard that have the same amount of skill that she has 
that does not move you, that does not move us the way that Julia moved us. And it's because of her heart. It's because of things that she's gone through. Ultimately, it's because of what music means to her when she practices it, when she participates in the gift of music. Man, I did not expect such a rich, deep, beautiful voice coming from her. And then let's talk about range. Oh my goodness. And mixed voice, gorgeous resonance up top, sang way higher than I expected her to sing and no strain at all, runs with that rich, deep tone and then also way at the top like that. Dude, that's the best singer of the night. Might be the best singer. <clears throat> Might be the best singer of the season. Might be the best singer of the season. I can't wait to see what she does with all the tools that she has paired with the most important one, passion and emotional connection to music and to songs. If you're watching this as a premiere, which I hope you are, it's the best way to watch this, then you can go now to the live Q&A that is right after the premiere. Premieres are on the night after the show at six o'clock central time. And then after the premiere, I have this live stream Q&A where you can tell me what you think about the video, about the episode, things that I missed on. I'll tell you what I think I missed on. Oftentimes, I look back on my video and go, I was too harsh on that person, or I was too nice. We can talk about all those things, how you disagree with me, how I disagree with me, in the live Q&A. But in order to be a part of the Q&A and ask questions and comment, you have to be watching the premiere so that you can hop right over. Speaking of which, if you're still watching as a premiere, go ahead and click the link and we'll hop on over to the live Q&A. Next week, we've got Hollywood Week, the first week, and it's a gauntlet, and I think it's quick. Two episodes next week, which means two idle breakdowns next week. We're in it for, we're in it for, the, for the long haul here. Every episode, we're going to have an idle breakdown for you. I'll see you guys next week, and I, I just got a feeling it's going to be a crazy one, and I think I'm going to be upset about things, so that'll be fun. See you next week.